from around the globe, it's theCUBE, with digital coverage of AWS reInvent 2020, sponsored by Intel, AWS, and our community partners. Welcome to theCUBE's coverage of AWS reInvent 2020, the virtual version. I'm Lisa Martin here with the guest from Boomi. Please welcome Ed McCoskey, it's head of product to the program. Ed, nice to see you today. Nice to see you, Lisa. So here we are in our very socially distant world, but I know a lot about Boomi and that Boomi is really all about connecting people with what they want now. So talk to me before we dig into kind of what's going on with AWS, what's the landscape at Boomi like in this year that has had so much change? So things have been going uh, really well for us business-wise. I think, you know, as, as we've come through this pandemic or we continue to work through the pandemic, we're seeing a lot of our customers um, accelerating their, their migrations to the cloud, acceleration, accelerating their modernization journeys. Um, in fact, we've seen a 30% uptick in usage in our platform, you know, in the last several months as, as people just continue to double down on automating, integrating their systems, um, working through integrated experiences to, to really, like you said, um, put, put data in the hands of the users, the data that they're looking for uh, and the workflows that they're looking to automate, they're, they're accomplishing that in our platform. So things have been good. That's good in a year of such uncertainty. <laughs> so as we kind of look at, you know, you talked about it, we've been talking about it for months now, this acceleration of the digital journey that COVID is really catalyzing. Mm -hmm. Let's get specific with, from an integrated experience perspective, I think we're all as consumers even more demanding of an integrated experience now more than ever. How are you working with customers to help them achieve that? Sure, so, so the way we look at the world um, through our lens is data connectivity and user engagement are, are critical pieces to a cloud modernization or a cloud migration uh, journey. So just like in life, uh, people make connections early on and, and as they work through life, they leverage those connections to make advancements, that sort of thing. I did an interview actually a couple of weeks ago with an A-list celebrity where he gave us a bunch of feedback around connectivity, uh, where he talked about early on in his life, he made connections that, that provided him value later in, in his career. We think of the same thing for a business, right? If you think about as a business, your customers, your employees, your end users, it's important to take your most strategic asset, which is your data, and, and put that to work for you and make connections with those users, employees, partners, et cetera. Um, so we look at those as integrated experiences, right? And we, we offer a platform that in a low code way allows a business to make those connections with users in those integrated experiences. I'd love to know who the A-list celebrity was, but I won't ask you to divulge that information. <laughs> but as we look at that, you know, nowadays, we had this massive shift in the last eight months or so where I think as consumers, we've been, everything's been on demand for a while. We're used to getting what we want. And in the business world, there was a, a big shift in trying to figure out companies, well-known companies, you know, filing for chapter 11 and trying to figure out how do we pivot, not just once, but it's a series of, of pivots, right? So talk to me about from, from a, an integrated experiences perspective, any customers that you kind of think in particular really, really highlight what Boomi is doing there to allow those customers to have connected integrated experience while you're helping those customers modernize and transform their businesses. Yeah, I mean, I, I can talk to a couple of examples um, where, you know, when, when the pandemic hit and the COVID situation hit, we had a lot of, um, you know, I think the world saw there were a lot of mom and pop shops downtown Main Street. Uh, where, where they were trying to collect information from industry, from, from their governments and industries, and they were trying to relay, relay that information out to um, their customers and users. And most of them, those small businesses, uh, weren't IT enabled in any way, shape, or form. And um, we, we tried to figure out what as a business can we do to help solve some of these challenges in a Boomi for Good initiative. And we put out a solution called uh, Answers on Demand that we gave out to free, for free, and within... I believe it was two weeks, we had only t over 2,500, you know, customers from all different shops around the country that, that registered and, and basically were able to themselves stand up a frequently asked question uh, site within their web page, uh, chat bots that they were embedded, they were able to embed in their web page all in a low code way. And that was kind of one example. Another from an enterprise example is you think of things like hey, a new employee starts and typically they can walk in the first day, people hand them forms, they walk around, they meet with different departments. How do I get myself onboarded to an organization? Well, 
in the world today, everybody expects things to be on their mobile. They expect things to, to be done immediately. And they're not going to go to 10 different apps in order to onboard themselves to go get swag or sign themselves up for their payroll, et cetera. That's a classic, you know, integrated use, integrated experiences use case that we help with where it's, hey, we can help with integrating those systems in the back end and provide an integrated experience to your new employees that come on board so they can walk through and be up and running within your company very quickly in a remote way. So we offer all the tooling that businesses can customize those, make them look like their, um, you know, their color schemes of their business, so on and so forth, create custom workflows, all again in a low code way, because we focus on time to value. It's about getting something done very quickly versus a long IT project that's going to take, you know, two to three years. Yeah, I remember, I think it was Booming World last year where Chris, your CEO, was talking about uh, the onboarding experience when he started at Boomi and how massively transformed that is. But to your point, right now, there's so many things that we don't have time for. And so when there's obstacles in our way or processes are more convoluted, it just makes everything you know, not function well together or allow customers to really maximize their investments in particular mm -hmm. technologies. I wanted to get your take on speaking of maximizing investments. How does Boomi help? How do you work with and partner with AWS to help your customers maximize their investments in AWS's technology and services? Sure. So, so we, uh, you know, we've built our platform first and foremost on top of the AWS platform. So we sit there natively and we take advantage of all of AWS's uh, services behind the scenes to, op scenes to offer a secure platform. Um, that customers can work in from a low-code development environment. Uh, from there, uh, you can take advantage. You can take your Boomi integrations and you can run them within uh, the AW your own AWS environment if you'd like to. So we've actually launched um, a, a Boomi Quick Start that allows you to okay quickly deploy a runtime that spins up in the AWS cloud. So you can you know run your workloads there in a secure way. If you've got your own security set up, you can run within that domain versus going within Boomi's cloud, if you'd like. Uh, we're also about to release a, an elastic version of that that's Kubernetes-based so that you could um, you know, scale that up and down and take advantage of your AWS resources and, and not in a fixed way, but more in a serverless type capacity. Uh, we also have data catalog and prep capabilities now, which we didn't have last year, but we have, we've added these so that you can explore your AWS endpoints, you can explore any business endpoints that you have and kind of Look at what data you have that you can, you know, harvest to 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 pull together and and offer that, and make that available to your customers and end users. You can run all of that in your AWS environment as well. Uh, we put a bunch of focus in event driven architecture. So as a you know as a classic integration scenario, a lot of people focus on pub sub patterns, those types of things. So we we release connectivity to EventBridge, SQS, et cetera. We also support connectivity to Redshift so you can handle data warehousing scenarios. So again, a lot of investment in the AWS ecosystem in the last year and a half to two years. And we continue, you know, we're going to continue doing that. We're just kind of at the beginning of that. So you know, Boomi has over 12,000 customers ranging from, you know, the big guys, nonprofits like American Cancer Society, et cetera. How do you work with customers as head of product to help them influence their roadmap, to be able to take in the information that they need to, for example, we want to we want to be able to work with Boomi and, and really um, modernize, but also maximize our AWS investment. What is that customer feedback loop like? Sure. So we've got within Boomi, we have a customer success team that focuses on all of those customers and different tiers, verticals, um, you know, different horizontal plays, et cetera. But we have success people that look out, you know, for our customers, meet with them on a regular basis. They bring a lot of that feedback back into product. I'm an executive sponsor for a number of our customers um, where I meet with them directly to understand the project's use cases. What are they trying to achieve and take that as input? But, but very specifically, we do quarterly webinars for our customers where we get each of our product managers, including myself, do a two-hour session where we go through every single detail of here is what we are expecting ourselves to deliver to you as a customer over the next year. And that gives our customers the opportunity to see all those details. We publish them online publicly. We then allow them to come back through direct relationships with product or customer success to request these enhancements. We score them. Uh, we go through, we do commit uh, at least 25% of our roadmap to customer specific requests. 
Um, you know, even the 75% other piece of the roadmap, we're looking at what we feel is the best interest of our customers and where we want to take them in an innovative way. But like I said, the 25% are direct commitment to, hey, customer wants XYZ feature, we'll put that in the 25%. And that's key, especially right now to be able to be able to, I don't want to say be reactive because we often use that as, as a bad term, but be able to pivot quickly and, and take that information in and make the changes needed that will benefit countless others. If we go back to integrated experiences, you know, here we are at this virtual AWS reInvent and we're so used to being surrounded in Vegas by 45,000 people, but talk to me about how Boomi is helping AWS customers with their integrated experiences. What are some of the things that you guys are really excited about that you're enabling now? So with an integrated experience, you know, again, I go back to the three things that any customer, AWS customer specifically need to, to think about in order to create an integrated experience. So data readiness is the first piece. So with AWS, you'll be spinning up a number of the services, you'll be putting data in the cloud, so on and so forth, but you need to make sure that that data is of high quality, um, it's secure, it's understood, something like, you know, 60 to 70% of data that you have in an enterprise is, is unknown. And we help solve some of those challenges through our catalog and prepping tools. So even if you're moving a bunch of your processes and data and applications into the cloud, we can help customers with data readiness and making sure it's secure and of high quality. The second piece is pervasive connectivity. So it is about connecting all of your data sources. So we do have an open platform. You have all your AWS services that we can help you connect to to get data from those sources or, or transfer them to those sources. But we also allow you to extend out into on-prem or other clouds as well. So as much as we love and work with uh, AWS, we do understand that people need to move things into the cloud, out of the cloud, et cetera. You know, uh, we help with all of those connectivity challenges that an organization may face. Uh, and then the third is that user engagement piece. So you can move data all around all you want, you can understand your data, but unless you're putting it in the hands of the user and allowing them to act on that data in some way, shape or form, um, the tools we have you know, around workflow and building those in a low code way, you can do all of this in a, you know, a unified platform that we have that you can go in and build in a low code way. You don't have to be a pure hardcore Java developer to get things done. Uh, we focus on time to value. So you can, you know, we have stories of customers building their first set of integrations or workflows in, in you know, minutes or a couple of hours versus some of our competitors who take days, weeks, or months, so. From a low-code perspective, something I'm just curious about, that's kind of be a facilitator of during the last, you know, eight months of things changing and, and customers not being able suddenly to get into their data centers or on site. Talk to me a little bit about some of the things, maybe even anecdotally, that you've heard about Boomi's low code development platform being facilitator of people that couldn't get to a data center. Yeah, so I mean, uh, all of the development, even before COVID, all, all low code development that you did for Boomi was in a web browser. We've always been that, right? So we, we have that capability. And then from a runtime, I was talking earlier about how you can run in an AWS cloud, but you can also set your runtime behind a firewall if it is at a facility. You can put it in you know, any locations around the world. So when the pandemic hit and folks started needing to work remotely, it was kind of a non-event for many of our developer, our low-code developers because they can now access their browser from home and still access all those resources, whether it's on site in AWS or wherever. They were then forced to, okay, the rest of the business is saying, we need to make data available. We need to actually now put processes in place and, and Boomi became an asset to say, wait a minute, it's not about just integration behind the scenes that's plumbing that nobody sees. Our users started becoming heroes in their business by standing up workflows and saying, I can quickly, because it's low code, oh, you need to collect information about, uh, you know, in, in some cases, you know, citizen information that they used to go to, you know, I don't know that I could talk about this government, but citizens used to have to go into a building in order to fill out forms and whatnot. We need to collect data live. How can I do that? Okay, this government now just used Boomi to start posting these on their website, these workflows in a secure way. You know, that's just some examples. I talked about answers on demand before, uh, but, but we've seen this pivot of user engagement more out of, you know, bringing middleware and integration out of the shadows of IT into solving real problems as people are now dispersed around the world at home, so. Solving real problems and probably helping a lot of businesses not just survive the last few yeah. months and forward, but thrive 
as well as as there's we know some things from this will be permanent. Last question to you, just kind of give us a sneak peek into some of the solutions and the initiatives that Boomi and AWS are working on together. Yeah, so I talked a little bit about these before. So we are an advanced tech partner. Uh, we're a public sector partner. Uh, we run our platform on AWS again. So we continue to work on how we can keep expanding and taking advantage of AWS services to make things more scalable um, and more, more and more secure. It's always a top priority, you know, given the shift to the cloud and AWS is helping us with those. Uh, we have our quick starts that we're working on again uh, to make things quicker and easier for people to stand up integration workloads in AWS, uh, catalog and prep again, all of the connectivity that we have to things like EventBridge, SQS, Redshift, et cetera. Um, you know, those are all the things we're, we're collaborating on with them. And again, through the next year, we'll continue to keep focusing on more and more to just make running your Boomi environment in AWS more and more seamless. Seamless, I'll take it. Well, Ed, thank you so much for sharing what's going on with Boomi and AWS on this virtual event. We appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you so much. For Ed McCoskey, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE's coverage of AWS reInvent 2020, the virtual edition.